sweet birch, and black birch. What do we need? We need some identification books, and we'll go down and look around for a sweet birch. Here's some leaves of a small sweet birch tree. This is the bark, a young one. Here's the underside of the sweet birch or black birch. This is the bark of a mature sweet birch. Here's another one, it's more mature. So this bark does not peel off like other birches. It stays pretty tight to the trunk, doesn't really peel off. So make sure to use multiple copies of identification books to identify the tree. Check out the leaves, the barks, and even the fruit or the seeds. So there it is, a black birch. Also, it gives off a smell of wintergreen or smells very sweet, so it's also called a sweet birch. So in this field guide, it's identified as sweet or black birch. It also continues on to the next page, talks about how to identify it. In this identifying book, I have the sweet birch here, gives more description of how to identify it. And in this book, it gives pictures of the bark, pictures of the leaves. Some different pictures of the bark and more description of it. Once we've properly identified a tree, we're gonna sustainably harvest some of the inner bark. So this here is the outer bark. Show you how to get to the inner bark and how to take that off. The tools we're gonna need, need a flat screwdriver and a good sturdy knife. I also need a good pair of gloves. So what I found was best to separate this is take this knife and just go down through it. All right, so now we've cut this all the way down through. We're gonna take our screwdriver and start peeling it back. Okay, so here we have the outer bark, and here we have the inner bark, and here we have the heartwood of the tree. So we have the outer bark, the inner barks, and the heartwood of the tree. So we want to get the inner bark is what we're gonna harvest. And you just keep going like that. Just keep peeling it. Sometimes it, it can't peel it all off, so you just use a knife a little bit to scrape it. So that's how you harvest it. 
So after you finish this whole piece, you harvest all that inner bark, you're gonna end up with something like this, taking that off. Now that can be used as firewood. So you're getting multi-purposes out of this one tree. So once you harvest this inner bark and get as much as you want, we'll take it and we'll put it into a dryer. We'll take you over there and show you the dryer, but you'll really know what it is because it smells really good. Uh, it smells really good, just like wintergreen. It's one of my favorite smells. So we'll take you over now to the dryer and show you how to dry this bark and prepare it for long-term storage. So this is one way to make a dryer. I have a stainless steel table, two old screen doors. Works out really nice because there's enough height in there to get whatever herbs you want to put in there. This isn't the only way you can do it, but this is one way. And it's in a shaded spot where the air's flowing through. You got the breeze. You want to keep the sun away from the herbs so that it doesn't hurt the herbs as they dry. So this is in a warm, airy place outside that's going to help this bark dry. I do take the bark in at night so that the dew does not get on it. So this is in the morning. We're going to set this bark up and show you how it's done. Just going to start by flipping this over. Flip that over. And we have our bark all gathered up. We're going to lay it out to dry. Just lay it out so that they're not on top of each other, so they'll get the most airflow. Help it dry faster, prevents mold. Now we're going to close it up. This will protect it from insects and debris getting in there. Also it's high enough so you can stack all that in there. To dry it you have to just watch how it dries. It may take several days or several weeks. Depends on humidity. Depends on how much airflow there is. I do collect it every night so that the dew doesn't get on it and make it moist again and put it back out in the morning. Once the bark is dried out, you want to store it for long term. Use a glass half gallon mason jar and store that in a dry, cool, dark place and that will be able to store that sweet birch bark for long term storage. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've learned something about how to harvest a bark. Continue to learn. There's more to learn. Always continue to learn. Hope this helps you in your endeavors to collect some bark and to use it.